Well, Sir Arthur, I very much enjoyed our talks. They've been fun, haven't they? Yes. But now we come at last to your final gift. And what's that? My last gift, I'm sure you've guessed it, is twelve lords a-leaping. Why have you chosen that? Well, as a Christmassy thing, really, to remind us all in this seasonal goodwill of the twelve wise lords who came leaping into the stable at Bethlehem at the birth of our Saviour. I don't think they did, Sir Arthur. Oh, yes. Boing, 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 as in the carol. No, I'm afraid you're mistaken. Are you sure? Yes, quite certain. Last, oh, dear. I... Very confusing. Um, now, I don't remember who was in the stable. Must have been uh, the uh, the hens, was it? Three hens? No, uh, no, sorry about this. Was it the goats? Were they in the stable? Uh, partridges? I don't know. Perhaps two turtle doves, three French lords, four enormous larks, twelve leaping lizards, hens. Uh, I'm uh, a bit of a muddle. Uh, not much of a Bible buff myself, I'm afraid. Don't take much interest in Christmas. Uh, it used to be great fun in the old days when it was simply an orgy of commercial excess, but now I find that people are tainting the whole thing with a lot of religious mumbo jumbo. Thank the Lord it's over for another year. Yes, I, w I was going to ask you, sir, Arthur, how will you spend the rest of your year? Oh, well, uh, the rest of the year. That goes completely into preparation with the Griebling fate. I have to go around putting signs up on all the trees saying, August the 4th, fate, to get the villagers interested. And I always start putting these up good and early on about August the 5th, generally, as soon as the previous fate has lumbered to a close. I'd like to give plenty of notice. You raise a lot of money for charity, I understand. Oh, an enormous amount, yes, an enormous amount, because fortunately we have very low overheads. What we do is we simply throw open the grounds and invite villagers in to buy nettles, grass, goats, sparrows, worms, flies. Anything, in fact, that flourishes in the garden is theirs for under a fiver. That money is then ploughed back into my bank account. Do you have stalls for the produce, or is it more pick your own? We find that people get more pleasure in picking their own and in pursuing the worm, particularly on their own. That is a lonely sort of hunt. The excitement, that, that sort of thing, pick your own nettles is, is quite popular, I suppose largely because the sign says mint. As a result, we sell an awful lot of dock leaves. My own favourite is the bring and buy aspect. The villagers bring a lot of their stuff and then buy it back from us at a small percentage. A hundred, I think it is, yes, a hundred percent. They enjoy that, and of course... We do have peg dancing. Is that uh, like Morris dancing? Yes, very like Morris dancing. Really. A woman called Peg comes in and dances. You're very fond of the gardens here at Griebling, Sir Arthur. Oh, yes, I'm tremendously, tremendously fond of the gardens because uh, we keep them uh, right outside here, you see, and uh, they're, they're absolutely beautiful. That's why I'm so completely devastated by those storms we've been having recently. They played havoc with the grounds. We had an enormous number of beautiful trees blown over, blown over from the neighbouring properties, which uh, landed here and uh, took root. Absolutely ruined the putting green. Nevertheless, the garden is open again now and is very popular with the public. Why do you think that is? Well, I think probably people are attracted by the enormous sign outside on the A34 saying. Miniature railway, farm, zoo, vintage car museum, tropical aquarium, jousting exhibition, bonsai garden, and licensed restaurant. It is very impressive. Yes, uh, it is, isn't it? Uh, one of our neighbours, the Duke of Bedford, very kindly allowed us to steal it from him. The Griebling is not a large garden. It's nothing like Woburn or Blenheim or any of those places. It's a compact garden. We have vines, of course. Well, no, we don't have vines, actually. We don't have any vines at all, not even a hint of a vine. Well, we have, uh, we have cacti. Why do you think people keep coming? Because you don't have very many cacti, do you? Uh, just the one. Well, as I say, uh, I have a hunch that the sign may have something to do with it. It is a lovely sign. We just keep it outside. Well, we keep all of the outside outside. But more than that, it's a, it's a garden you can get round in a day, isn't it? Well, you can get round in a minute, actually. You don't have to waste a whole day trailing around the garden, and your time is your own. And entry's free, is it? Entry, yes, it is free. But exit is very, very expensive. It costs absolutely nothing to get in and a hundred pounds to get out. It's a walled garden. And apart from the cactus? That's it. Well, finally, Sir Arthur, I feel I've got to know you a lot better over these last twelve days. But I'm still curious as to one thing. What is it, in the end, that you really believe in? 
Well, um, I'd like to say I believe in God, of course, but I'm afraid as a thinking person who cares about the world around him, there are two very good reasons why I simply can't. What are they? Well, A, wasps. Can't see the point of a wasp, can you? Absolutely pointless. And B, caviar. I mean, really, what is the point of having caviar locked away inside sturgeon, so inaccessible? I'm sure if there were a real god, he would have arranged for caviar just to toddle over to your house on a pair of little legs in a self-opening jar. Sir Arthur, thank you. Oh, thank you, and uh, season's grieblings to you and uh, of course.